So it went from Chris Bell to Joe Rogan and Huberman, and then to more plates, more to Derek, more plates, more dates, and now Greg. And, and I just, it's all over the internet. So I think this is kind of, I call it a bad game of, of telephone, you know, where you play that game where one person tells somebody the other, and then it starts becoming something completely uh, exaggerated or different from the original meaning. So welcome back to the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. And as a guest today, back with us is Dr. Jordan Grant. Welcome back, Jordan. Hey, Stephen. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. So is the Drug Enforcement Administration trying to limit or restrict testosterone replacement therapy, TRT prescriptions via telehealth or telemedicine? I've seen that Chris Bell, Derek from More Plates, More Dates, and coach Greg Doucette already rang the alarm bells. But you, Jordan, you think maybe they are a bit exaggerating. Isn't that right? So I'll just hear you out. Yeah, I, um, you know, we, most of us became privy to this, um, I guess, late February when the DEA announced that they were going to be, uh, which we all knew this was coming. Basically, all the liberties that were given during COVID uh, would be coming to an end. And so I think this shouldn't be a surprise, first of all. Um, so the DEA came out with an announcement, I think it was the very end of February, and uh, we can post a link to it if you want to go read it. Um, basically saying what was going to happen was that once we go back to ending the pandemic, quote unquote pandemic, um, basically you're going to go back to the way things were prior to that, which mostly dealt with, it's called the Ryan Hate Act, which was passed a long time ago about um, internet prescriptions, basically. So a lot of it had to do with telemedicine and how, how things could be prescribed. In addition to that, there was a new, uh, it was actually expanding coverage. People think it's taking it away, but they're basically giving a an option where if, let's say a telehealth, and this mainly has to do with some of the psychiatric medications, but it still applies across the board because the way they schedule drugs. But basically, if you haven't seen a, a provider in person, they will allow a telemedicine prescription that's good for 30 days but at that point, the patient will need to have a face-to-face -face with the provider. That's it. So, you know, I, you know, and and that does you know affect people who are we've been doing telemed just face to you know on for the first visit, and, and that's just how we've been doing it through COVID. So you know, yeah, it sucks to hear that. Yeah, you're going to start seeing somebody at least, but it's just one time in person, and that's it. And then it goes back to business as normal. That's not. It's not unreasonable necessarily. Um, what I heard though, a few weeks ago, I guess was Chris Bell and Mark did a podcast and um, I, I went and listened to it and, and I heard them talking about this, all these things that I was like, this is not what I read. And they were talking about how you have to, they're basically the DEA is trying to stop, you know, ability to get testosterone easily. And you're gonna have to see a provider every 30 days to get a, a, a prescription every 30 days. And I'm going, well, this must be new. I need to go find where this is written because this is not what I had heard. And so I went and reread everything from the DEA's own website. They post two links that says, you know, you're reading here and here and you can click both of them and you read through the descriptions and there's nothing in there about that. And so essentially I think this is, and I could be wrong. You know, if somebody wants to post, maybe they've got privy to information I don't have. And I'm, I'm more, I'm more than happy to be wrong. I just can't find it. And, um, so I think this is kind of, I call it a bad game of, of telephone, you know, where you play that game where one person tells somebody the other, and then it starts becoming something completely uh, exaggerated or different from the original meaning. So I think that's kind of what happened. I think Chris Bell and Mark did their podcast and, and, and I get it. Like I know they're associated with a certain probably a telemed clinic. I think he mentioned them on there. And I, I get that this is going to affect the big uh, multi-state covering telemed clinics because they're going to have to have ways to see people in person. The only other option out of that is they state that you can get a referral from a DEA registered provider who documents a physical exam and documents certain other things and then sends the referral to a telemedicine physician. So let's say, you know, I wanted to see somebody telemed, then that person would get that referral and they'd have it sent to me. The problem is there's some, they're making you really be uh, detail, like you've got to write down every doctor that does that. You have to keep records of their NPI number, all these things they want you to keep. It's just going to be easier to see the patient in person one time. And then as far as we know for now, you just, it's business as usual with telemed at that point. And if you need to see them 
three times a year, four times a year, that's fine. If you only want to do it every six months, it's still fine. So it went from Chris Bell to Joe Rogan and Huberman, and then to more plates, more to Derek, more plates, more dates, and now Greg. And, and now just it's all over the internet. Like I've seen other other TRT clinics posting stuff on their channels. Like y'all need to write into the DEA about this. And it's like yeah, yeah, write into the DEA. That's fine, but we're gonna look like idiots writing into the DEA, DEA saying why are you trying to take away our testosterone and why are you making us get thirty day, you know, only thirty day supplies when I can't find that that's true. So. Yes, it's going to be, it's frustrating and I get it. Like for somebody like me, it's not as big a deal because I, I t you know, yeah, I'd love to be able to see people just for all visits telemed who can't get here, you know, right away. I'm seeing guys even in, in Texas that live eight to 10 hours from here. I mean, Texas is huge. Um, and so that's been nice, you know, and now I have to tell them, hey, guys, you got to come in one time and see me. Um, it is what it is. You know, you come in once and then we can continue doing our telemed. So it's going to affect these bigger clinics and I get it, you know, and that it's so it's kind of reactionary on their end. And, and I don't want to like go to motives because I realize it's going to hurt their business if they don't have a way to start seeing all these people face to face. And a lot of people aren't going to do it. They're just not. And this may not happen. Maybe the DEA will change their mind. Um, it's just to me, it's, it's not good to go around saying things that aren't true. Um, and so people just need to understand that as of now, it seems like the rules state that, as long as you see your provider in person for a one-time upfront visit and get a physical exam and all this stuff, then you're free to do telemedicine, um, whether it's every six months or even once a year, it depends on the substance that you're prescribing. Um, you know, that's, it is what it is. I mean, I, again, that, that affects a lot of us. And, and, you know, my, any plans for the future, I might've had to get out of urology one day and do hormones only. Like, is that gonna affect kind of how we do it? Yeah. I think it's nice to meet the people face to face. I think patients like it, first of all. Um, and so there's nothing wrong with that. But I do think we should have the freedom. I mean, I think these rules are kind of arbitrary. I understand that everybody thinks the DEA is trying to protect people, which is not true. That's the government is never they don't care about people. Um, these are laws for for other reasons in place. And so I, I don't want people to misconstrue this as me backing the government, because if they know me, they know I, that would never happen. This is just me trying to be honest with what I've read and because I don't I don't want people freaking out. And again, writing into the DEA saying, don't take my testosterone away. And the DEA is going, where did they get come up with this? Where did these guys even hear this? You know, I will say something, though, that, that has come to light and it's going to affect these clinics. And maybe I shouldn't be talking about this out loud, but it is what it is. So because uh, I looked into this for telemedicine. You cannot, I cannot pre be prescribing controlled substances to someone out of my state unless I have a separate DEA number for that state. So let's say you're a telemedicine clinic and you're treating people in 50 states, you have to have a DEA number in every one of those states. Well, guess what? In order to get a DEA number, you have to have a physical location in those states. You can't use, you can't do this virtual address stuff that they've been doing. I, I spoke with uh, the DEA about this directly uh, Justin Groshi spoke with his DEA uh, representative in Nashville about this directly, and we have confirmed that it's true. Like you, and so this this is the bigger deal that's not even really being talked about. Like this is going to hurt these guys more than anything if we can't get people. And, and I hate trying to go through the channels of the government and try to lobby and do all that crap because we're begging for permission essentially. But it needs to happen. They need to make a way for telemedicine providers to have an easier way to get registered to prescribe in all these other states. It's it's silly anyway, because if a person comes to me from out of state and goes back to their home state, I could write a prescription in that state, but I don't have a DEA in that state, but that's okay. I mean, we see it all the time. Patients go see uh, you know specialists across state borders all the time, and they may need a controlled substance, and there's no fight put up about that. So it's very arbitrary that they're making that about just telemedicine only. And I think if you're gonna say this new stuff and go back the way it was where we are seeing people in person, um, doing things the right way, you need to make it easier for these guys to, so that we can do telemedicine across state lines, in my opinion, that would be great. Um, so I don't know what these mega clinics are gonna do about this. I don't know how they're gonna get around it. Maybe they've got powerful enough, you know, lobbying groups and attorneys and friends that they can go to the government and say, can you guys like fix this? That'd be great. Cause that'll help us little guys who do wanna see people, you know, all across the country, because I do have a lot of guys that came during COVID and we backtracked on that a few, I guess about a year and a half ago when we found out that 
they weren't really allowing this out of state telemed stuff without special privileges you were supposed to apply for in every state. When, and it was all gray area. Nobody ever really knew what was going on. Um, but now that it's becoming clear, you know, we just, we're going to have to follow these rules, but they're not as restrictive as being said. The other thing is um, they're given like a grace period. So like a six month. So like, um, let's say up to now I've seen people uh, just telemed only. I've got until basically six months from May 1st. So until November 1st to get people in and see them in person. So, um, you know, it is, it just is what it is. So. Um, so if I understand well, Jordan, um, in the United States, um, there are big telemed clinics that never see a patient and they can just write out prescriptions for TRT and um, other drugs, right? Yeah, and I don't, you know, this all came to light more, I guess, during COVID. Um, I'm not exactly sure a lot of these places, what they were doing prior to that. Um, according to the law, they were supposed to be seeing people in person one visit. And I know that's how um, a lot of clinics were already doing it that way. I think Keith Nichols Clinic was doing it that way. If I remember them, people who've, you know, patients, for, patients former or current of there have spoken about that. So I know there were other clinics that were requiring an upfront physical uh, in-person visit before moving on to telemed. Um, so that's why it wasn't that big of a shock to me when I read this. I was like, okay, so it's basically going back to the way it was. Um, again, it, it is, it's unfortunate um, for a lot of these, because this has blown up during COVID. I mean, it's really given patients access to people they wouldn't have access to. And that's the beauty of it. I mean, that's what, that's what pisses me off about this is that the DEA does not care about people getting quality access to care. That, that, that this is going to limit their quality access to care because a lot of people will not travel to do this, even one time, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. I mean, if you really care enough about your health and you want to go see a good provider and all they say is, hey, come see me once, to me, that's very reasonable. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of people won't do it. A lot of, you know, and it is what it is. It's That's not really the kind of patients I'm looking for anyway. A lot of these guys are just your run-of-the-mill dudes that just want a TRT prescription, and so they can go through and get that with, with a lot of these places. It is what it is. I know there's stigma around that, and, you know, the, it's overblown that testosterone is dangerous. You know, you hear this from doctors all the time if you read doctors' forums, and they all think testosterone is going to kill you and give you blood clots and all that. It's not. It's not, you know, testosterone is nothing compared to some of the things people are taking. Uh, so things that doctors prescribe even, yeah. and testosterone is, is healthy, I mean, in general. Uh, especially when done the right way. So it's overblown, these fears about people just being able to, oh, heaven forbid, they get testosterone. Now they're just going to go back to underground, you know? So they're going to be, you know, taking risks. It's Russian roulette, never knowing if a vial is clean or dirty, full of heavy metals, who knows? Um, but that's what happens when the government regulates drug usage. It just creates black markets. And we can speculate on whether that's actually on purpose or not at a different time. Um, regardless, that this is kind of as it stands from my understanding, this is how it stands for now. Um, one of the uh, lawyers for WorldLink Medical, which is um, Neil Ruse's, you know, company, um, I listened to a webcast that the lawyer did going over this, and he he said the same thing. So he didn't mention anything about thirty day visits to get a thirty day prescription. Nothing. I mean, he he read it kind of the same way I'm I'm reading it. There was another website, this Foley Foley something. I think it's a legal firm. It was really good. They summarized everything really well. And I read that last night, read through the summary. And it was, again, it's everything that I had sort of already just read myself and it nothing to do with this in-person 30 day, every 30 day stuff. So if that is real, I hope somebody will link us the actual documentation so we can all be updated on that because I do want to know. But otherwise, if it's not, we need to not be freaking out too much. Um, I think most of these big clinics, if they want to, they'll, they'll, they'll find ways to deal with it. They'll, they'll start seeing people in person, have a way to do it. Um, there's lots of ways you can make that work. So, but we just want to be accurate in what we're saying. Sure. Okay. So thank you, Jordan, for clearing that up. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, Stephen.